The New York Public Library is one of the great public institutions of the world. For 125 years, we have served the public. We have taken and helped steward the collected cultural heritage of New York, of the nation, of the world. The library has not just books. It has newspapers. It has magazines. We have photographs. We have prints. This is one of the only 11 known copies of the Bay Psalm book which is the first surviving work printed in British North America. We have more information available to us than could ever be imagined years ago. We are currently at a moment of total transformation. The agent of change is digitization. What the cloud enables us to do is make materials available to thousands and thousands of people simultaneously. Cloud storage is effectively forever. The things that are put in the cloud now, they're going to be maintained across generations, across technology changes. The scale of the library's task is a fairly absurd one, and that makes this the most exciting moment in the history of the New York Public Library. It's interesting to compare digital versus print when you think about it, the book is one of the greatest technologies that we've ever had. And so it's a very intuitive way of connecting with information. Books take up room. You have to store them, but they last a very long time in the right condition. What makes moving them online wonderful is that you have people approaching it who don't necessarily think of themselves as scholars, and so you have them approaching the library's collections in new ways. Being married to a chef? Sometimes it's easy. Being married is a lot. <laughs> when she arrives in the kitchen cooking, she's like, let me, let me see, let me see what you're doing. <laughs> we have four restaurants in uh, Greenwich Village. So we're in the process of developing a restaurant to open mid-2020, and uh, it's taking its influence from early American cuisine, whether it's shaker design and furniture or philosophy. It's about the experience. Instead of this kind of clock, we go for a shaker hanging clock that can be great. All our restaurants begin with a lot of research. We think of the design and the menu and uh, the neighborhood and the whole thing, the whole bones of the project. We found a great source of inspiration through the public library to learn about graphics, to learn about uh, ingredients, language, just searching out information. You don't know what you're going to find sometimes. These are menus from the library's menu collection, which has about 55,000 or so restaurant menus in it. It is the largest collection of restaurant menus in the world. We've digitized them and then made them available through this website called What's on the Menu. You can sort through it by dish, by name of a restaurant, by year or period. It's like having a library in your house all the time. To go to the library, not all the time you have time, so you go online and search online. With what's on the menu, you can actually do research on a granular level that you can't really do if you just approach the physical menus themselves. One menu presents a lot of different things that we're going to use when we're putting together a project. We'll read and we'll read and we'll go through four different renditions and we'll say, huh, commonalities, proportions. When you look at a lot of these old menus, the term for avocado was actually called alligator pear. And if you look for alligator pear, you'll see it appearing on many, many menus. You don't necessarily know it's avocado unless you do a little bit more digging. Sometimes you actually use these menus to connect to other things that then give you more information. But that's one example. Today we're making an oxtail soup. We're following along these older recipes. Everything here is really ordinary in a special way. And that's very striking. So it has to be really fresh and it has to be done really well. Every librarian likes to hear that their collections are being used, period. Whether it's a high school student writing a paper or it's two chefs in New York, using our collection to inform new projects. The hardest thing to do sometimes is to help a person find what they're looking for. So we have to generate sufficient metadata that is highly descriptive. You never know what's going to be the thing that reveals something interesting about the subject matter until you do it. So by lowering the cost and the time to create and experiment and to innovate, AWS gives the library this new capability that they didn't have before. 
A research question now can be running a query across millions of pieces of information simultaneously. You can now answer questions that used to require you traveling hours to go to a certain place and look at a certain book. That book might now be accessible in your pocket through a simple like search online. The biggest challenge the New York Public Library faces in doing this is truly one of scale. We have millions upon millions upon millions of things that we have digitized or want to digitize. It could be sort of anything that was ever created by an electronic device that helps tell the story of someone whose collection we are taking on. A lot of different aspects of the cloud come into play here. Being able to launch compute instances, being able to use auto-scaling, being able to use load balancing to e evenly apportion the load across them. All those parts work together to make scalability happen. You get 40 boxes and this is one of the devices and one of the boxes, somebody finds it and says, hey, there might be interesting material on something like this. If you look on the back, none of those ports are something that you can connect to at this point in time. Generally, that means taking something like this apart. The challenge with a collection of this scale is not just responding to what people want at the moment, it's predicting what people might want in the future. It's also prioritizing those items that might not last until that future. Whether it's floppies, zip disks, CDs, VHS tapes, DVD RAMs, they were never really meant to last for decades or centuries. So part of what we've done through our digitization and our born digital preservation efforts is to migrate that information from its original format into something else that we can access in the cloud. Digitally, we are currently at five petabytes and rapidly growing. Five petabytes, that's a lot of data. The camera in your phone, you could take 57 pictures every second for 100 years to fill up five petabytes. Once you've got five petabytes of data, that's just your starting point. And what we see in the future is having that much information sort of multiplied at a scale that is even more unimaginable. You don't just set up three petabytes or four petabytes of material on a server somewhere and say, I hope it works. A really important aspect of doing long-term digital storage is making sure that your data isn't being quietly corrupted along the way. The cloud takes care of that for you automatically. Whether you want to do you know, machine learning on our AV collections or you want to emulate an old operating system, you want to make sure that we keep all of those options available. The New York Public Library is not just to sort of be a trove of things that happened in the past, but to be sort of this living, bubbling cauldron of stuff that is inspiring new stuff that is being made. Whether it's online or we get to go into the library, information is alive. It keeps feeding you and you grow and you, you know, you, you absorb more information than actually you were looking for. You're going to come away with a lot more inspiration or just curiosity. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> it almost sounds funny, but when you're using cloud storage, the sky is literally the limit. When I think of the future of New York Public Library, I think of a great public institution that still has important physical spaces that are a center for many, but an online version of itself that is equivalent in size and stature. And we will continue to add to those collections until time ends so that we can remember our past and create our future. Mm -hmm.